I'm Justin Schmidt from the Franklin Correctional Center, Department of Corrections. Uh, today we're going to talk about contraband in the prison and the importance of searches. Okay. Uh, first of all, I'd like to acknowledge the Northtown Department of Public Safety for providing this information for me to use. Uh, none of its graphics, many of y'all don't to be worried about that. Uh, first of all, introduction to searches. <laughs> Malik, uh, before we talk about searches, what, what, what do you think the average, average ratio is to inmates and staff? What did I just do with inmates? Yeah, what do you think it's going to do roughly? Okay. 7 to 1. 7 to 1. Mm -hmm. 2 to 3. 3 to 1. The ratio of inmates to staff. How many staff supervise how many inmates at one time? 1 to 50. 1 to 50? Yeah. That's kind of close. 68 to 1. I mean, there's one officer like myself who supervises about 68 inmates at any given time. It's kind of hard to search 68 inmates at one time. You know, I might search this guy one day, I might go over here and search this other guy the next day. That contraband is just floating around the, floating around the unit in the meantime. Why are searches important? Easy question. Go ahead, what is it? Exactly. The easiest answer for, for searches and whether important is to remove the contraband from the prison. Now the question now is, what is contraband? What is it? Give me the two types of contraband. Any drugs. Okay, that, that's specific. What? Give me a non, non specific type. Um, lethal. Lethal? Yeah, right. Okay, that's kind of close. What would be the opposite of lethal? Yeah. Non lethal. Non lethal, okay. Mm -hmm. The terms we use are threat and non threat. Um, specific on the threat, like you said, um, threats could be weapons, shakes, screwdrivers that are sharpened down to a point. Uh, escape plans, those are considered a threat. An uh, inmate has blueprints of the uh, prison. You can't have that. That's a threat. Non threat is going to be, like you said, drugs. Number one, number one non threat contraband is drugs. Other ones we have, we have uh, Buck, which is prison alcohol. Really easy to make. You just take a bunch of fruit, put it in a cup, put some sugar and some yeast in there, and let it ferment. A couple weeks, you have a nice little alcohol. <laughs> smells horrible, or smells great, tastes horrible. Right, rules for searching. When you are searching inmates in the correctional environment, you must work from top to bottom. That just helps keep it all uniform. If I'm searching from top to bottom, but then this guy's searching bottom from top, then we got a new guy coming in, he doesn't know which way's up. <coughs> Alright, so start from the head. Start from the head, work down the collar, work your way down the body. Touch everything. Everything. Oh, we <laughs> touch everything. <laughs> we'll, we'll touch on that in just a minute. I know what you're thinking of. Be thorough. Again, be thorough. You are not thorough, they will get away with that contraband. You will not find it. Concentrate. Number one distraction is that inmate is going to try to talk to you. He's going to try to get you to talk about your personal life, what you have for lunch, what your mama doing, what your daddy doing. Some of them you know from the street. If you grew up in the area, we have an officer, he knows 25% of the inmates of that camp because he grew up with them in the same city. And it just happens. So they're going to talk about anything. Hot spots. There are three hot spots when you are doing a search on the Okay? Can anybody name one? What? Uh, <laughs> take the other side of the body. <laughs> the groin is number one. Yeah. Or waist is number one, but groin is the second. Waist area is very easy, especially if you're wearing a belt. You just tuck something right there. You're gonna find, especially if I leave my shirt hanging out. Um, <laughs> groin. If you said shoes. Yeah. Alright? That's, uh, that's kind of specific for the third one, below the knees. Anything below the knees. Below the knees, you have your socks and your shoes. It's really easy to slip something in there. Don't try to take it off you? Take what off? Don't try to take your socks off of you? Look at that. You keep jumping at it. What's up with that? He paid attention. He paid good attention, it sounds like. Alright, so types of searches. We do, we do three searches in the prison environment. One is called routine, the other one's complete, the other one is body cavity. Only one of those searches can we not do as correctional staff. Body cavities. Thank you very much. Body cavity is the one type of search we cannot do as correctional staff. What did y'all eat? Did you ever drink much caffeine? Because y'all are waiting one for third class. <laughs> Other two classes were asleep. <laughs> Routine search is a patent for a search. Simple search, same thing any police officer does. He pulls you aside, pats you down, start the head. You got a hat on, you take your hat off, search the inside of that. Search the collar, work your way down the arms, check under the armpits, chest, back, stomach, waistline. Put your fingers in the waistline. Pull on those pants. All right, that, that's, that's where your contraband is going to be hidden. We've had guys cut open holes in the waistband and just slip them <coughs> in and go around the ship all day long. Okay, and if you just touch that waistband, you'll find it. Go down here to the groin, 
you search up, you reach way up in there. Okay? I know you don't want to. I know all the guys are looking like, you're crazy. Okay? Yes. Reach up in there. You don't have to grab him, but you do need to put your hand up in there. Because we have had guys take a cell phone, take a drug, anything. You take right from that, inside that line. Inside, inside that line. Okay? Question. When can one be performed? Anytime. At any time. Perfect. And what about for police officers? Is it the same? Yeah. No, they have to have probable cause. They have to have suspicion. If they suspect it, they can search you. Most common, most common response to police officers, they're going to ask you. I don't have to ask. I can walk up to any inmate in that prison, any of the 488, say, come with me. Huh? Yeah, any, any, any one of them, I can walk up and say, come with me, I'm do the search, pat them down. Alright? Then we move on to our police search. Also known as strip search. Strip searches are not fun, but they are necessary. Okay? If I do that pat down and I find something, or even if I don't find something, I can tell them, hey, come on, let's go, let's go do a strip search. Especially if I think he has something. But again, same question, when can this be performed? At any time. Anytime, for any reason, without any suspicion, I can take him and say, let's go. Take your pants off, take your shirt off, let's see everything. Come in, the world, come in uh, show, me, show me what you look like when you came into the world, basically. Uh, I'm not going to laugh at that one. Can be done without touching anything. I don't want to touch anything when I strip search him. In fact, I don't want to touch him. If that he's taking off his clothes, I don't touch him. All right, but there are some important parts of the strip search. Number one important thing, let's see if anybody can, can pick up on it. What's the number one important thing with the strip search? Make sure he's in the old body. That's uh, a little specific. That, that, that's not so specific. It's a squat call. Yeah. Yeah. Squat cough. I never really thought they like, oh, you got to bend down and cough. You got to squat, bend yeah, down the knees, spread your butt cheeks and cough. Yeah. Okay? Why? The purpose behind that is because guys do, guys and girls, doesn't matter, hide stuff in the butt. Yeah. It has happened. <laughs> and we will talk more about that in just a few minutes, all right? Another one, when the is looking at you, you gotta, you, you're ready to get that strip search, you can do it before or after the taste clothes up. Depends on how often you want to be in the situation. Have that in the open his mouth. Wide, lick your tongue. Let me see everything in that mouth. Now, how are you going to say something right here in the inside of your cheek? Or in your tongue? I mean, they don't, they're not hiding a pound of wheat in there, but <laughs> I got a little doobie and I put it in there. It's not hard to hide, is it? Alright? Have they made shake out their hair? We have a lot of guys in prison who have a lot of hair. Anybody here familiar with Rust Farns? You have a nice, nice long flowing hair that's all kept up in there. Rastafarian crown, the dreads. Have them shake those dreads out. We have found gang material, we have found weapons. We have found weapons in their hair. All they do is they slide that shit and just put it in your hair. And they're walking around all day, you don't even know. Okay? Have the male and base lift the genetic. Okay? When you are doing that strip search, have them lift it. Because you don't want to touch it. <laughs> so you're not going to reach in there and make him lift it. You're, you're not going to reach in there and lift it for him. So make him. Lift it, lift it, let me see, turn around, walk off, all that stuff. That's how you do a very thorough strip search. All right, body cavity search. This is the one that I said we cannot do as correctional staff. Okay? I know you might uh, see him looking at it, but what the heck is that? What's that little right here? A phone. A little blackberry, huh? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a blackberry in somebody's rectum. He put that in his rectum before he came to prison. And he was hiding it in there, he was trying to get into prison. Okay? Must be done by medical staff. No matter what orifice it is, except for the mouth, it must be done by medical staff. How is that going to get that out of here? Is there a going to toilet? <laughs> okay, just, you know, take care of some business in the toilet, it's gone. It makes all this suitcase. Kind of like a suitcase that you take on a, on a, on a plane trip or going down to Disney World or whatever. See grandma, grandma, anything. A suitcase. That's what they call it. They, they call their record the suitcase. All right, so I'm going to show you some examples of a very easily hidden contraband. What's it look like right there? A key from the bar, sir. All right, that looks like a soap bar. It looks like a handcuff key. That looks like my handcuff key. All handcuff keys are the same, just about. There's a few, there's a few that won't work on all handcuffs, but it may have that egg in a, in a bar of soap. All he did was push it in there, just push it to that soap, hang it around. And then he uh, and covers it up with some extra soap, just lather it up, get that soap to dry. The only reason they found it, the officer was looking at the soap and saw kind of an imprint. And he recognized that imprint as a handcuff key. But you had to visually see that. If you don't keep your eyes open, you won't see it. Alright? 
This video was supplied by the World News Network. Looks like a regular water, uh, regular water bottle. Wait, what? That was drugs in the water bottle. Looks like, a, looks like an aquafina bottle to me. Turns it upside down, you see the water inside the bottle. Okay. Twist top removed, there's all the drugs. Wow. <laughs> if, you if you weren't paying attention to that, that would easily turn into a prison. Okay? Um, <laughs> how much contraband can you hide? A lot. You can hide a lot. I'm about to show you a video that's uh, going to show you exactly how much you can hide. Okay? That was all found in that kid, right there. How does this shot? Oh, yeah. Oh, thank you, right there. Look at that kid right now. Look at his shirt. Look at look, look what he's wearing. And I'm going to show you the video as well. How he did all that. Right. Here's the video. This video is provided by Safe Havens International. Uh, back in 98, they did, this, they did this demonstration to try to persuade schools to do um, uh, uniforms. Because if we can get uh, proper fitting uniforms, we can, <laughs> we can reduce the amount of risk that this video is right here. You see, he pulled out those three pocket guns, a uh, pistol, revolver, a bigger revolver, uh, another pistol, Mac 10, Mac 10, right in the back of his body, back in his pants, shotgun, <laughs> down the waistband, down, down the leg of the pants, and in the back pocket, he had two more handguns. If this kid, if this kid had came to a school to shoot up a school, he'd have lots of ammo. He wouldn't be worried about him, huh? okay? That right there, the only reason I showed this video has nothing to do with the uh, Department of Corrections because we don't have to worry about those guns coming into the facility like that with an inmate because we strip search them every time we come in. I just want to show you how easy it is to hide the contraband. If you didn't put your hands on that kid, you would have never found that weapon. He would have walked into the school, no problem. Okay? Another example, these are work boots. Um, these were found during a search at Nash Correctional. Looks like normal work, work boots. Look right there. Can you see that right there? Yeah. Doesn't look like nothing. It looks like it looks like a piece of grass. Yeah. Pull it flat. Oh, <laughs> the man was smart enough. He knew how deep that sole went or how deep that uh, tread went. He cut it open, dug out a hole. That's where he had his drugs. He would hide his drugs right there. Never wore the boots. That's the man's locker all the time. Officer finally got smart when he was his hand up the boot and caught it. Okay. How'd you cross cream? Nice sealed box of hydrocodone. Has a tube of, uh, pigment, all right? I'll tell you the first one to tell you, inmates have the ability to make glue in the prison. It's just a little coffee cream, a little bit of water, put it in the microwave, heat it up, you got glue. Don't try it at home, though, because it's going to wet. Officer got smart, realized it was a little heavier than normal, so he opened up the box, found a battery pack. He was making a bomb with them? He wasn't making a bomb. Those battery packs are used to power cell phones and um, tattoo needles. Tattoo guns. All it has is uh, has two little wires right here, positive and negative. And what they'll do is they'll take that, they'll hook it up to the cell phone, they'll get it to charge. Two toothpaste, brand new two cold gate toothpaste. Again, was in a sealed box. Officer was uh, doing a thorough search, opening it up, was looking at it, open up the top. Saw something right at the very top. What's your name again? Oh, shit. So people send people in jail? No, no, no. This is what they were hiding in jail. Oh, okay. okay. This is, you can buy that toothpaste right now. Yeah, this is like a high price. Is this the I know you can buy like a box of tickets, like $50. Okay, and we'll, we'll, we'll talk more about that. Just keep all these questions in mind, and we'll talk about these after the presentation, right? You see that right there? Very typical uh, picture. Can't really see it. Pulled it out. It was a shame. That right there will do some damage to the prison. Okay? So we want to stay with people's toothpaste? In conclusion, search is our top priority in prison. If you are not searching as a correctional officer, you are not doing your job, and you're putting everybody else in harm's way. Search is our top priority. They must be done. Okay? Look everywhere. It makes that 24 7 to sit there and think about ways to hide in the country. We just caught a guy yesterday, or uh, Saturday. He was dealing, uh, he was dealing uh, tobacco in the day room. Every time we would go in there searching, we wouldn't find anything. What we found out is the officers weren't searching over there underneath that table. What he had done was he had stuck it up underneath the table, got it taped up there, 
And if dad's came over and paid for it, he would just pull it out and hand it to him. <coughs> Whenever we go and shake him down, nothing on him. Give me a couple stamps. Stamps of currency in prison. We'll post it. Let me pay your stuff. Okay? Again, you must consider to do that. Anytime, any place, anywhere. There is no restriction. Um, remember, technology is advanced. As technology gets, it gets more advanced, you're going to find smaller devices. Um, we just recently got an alert for prisons that they have released a new handcuff key. It is about, when it's not full, it's full, about that big, clips right in there to your waistband. Hides up underneath clothes. We just got to learn about that because they said that it could be coming to the prison soon. If anybody has a handcuff key, that's a big deal. It's a big deal. Okay? Um, I did want to show you all something after this uh, presentation. It uh, has nothing to do with contraband. It actually has more of a control techniques. Uh, that concludes the presentation on contraband.